Let us pray. God, we, we wait for you because we know you wait for us. We know that you are already waiting for us wherever we go. Help us, God, to understand what you're saying here. You're saying so much. You're saying so much about evil and about good and about family and about that there's so much we need to, to, to find. Help these words to lift up what it is you want us to know. In Jesus' name, amen. It's a memorable line that nobody wants to hear. He's gone out of his mind. According to our reading, that is what a lot of the people who were gathered around him is very crowded. It's early in the Gospel of Mark, and the people, the crowds are surrounding him. And this is what they, a lot of people apparently were saying about Jesus and about his ministry. And apparently, even his own family was worried about him as well. Because as the reading puts it, they came to restrain him. They came to take him home for his own good, against his will. Friends, this reading today, it's actually an intervention by his family. Have you ever, in your own families, don't raise your hands on this one. <laughs> Have you ever, in your own families, has anyone ever said, mother, father, sister, brother, said, you're out of your mind? Happened a lot in the Bunnis family growing up. It's been known to happen in the Bunnis family now. But my mom, she had a nicer way of getting at that same point. And I got to tell you, it really bugged my brother and me. We talked about it later in life. So the bonuses have been known to hyperventilate about things and been known to do this too. And so my mom, she, had, she'd say, she said it a lot. She'd say, she'd look at me or Billy. We were hyperventilating. I don't know why it was mostly me and Billy. She'd say, take it easy. And I, Billy and I talked about this later years. And we, it, 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 we, we said it really, it felt patronizing. It's like, you know, someone saying to you, chill. Take it easy. We didn't like it. But you know what we knew when we talked about it? That mom was right. We did need to take it easy plenty of times. And ironically, ironically, Take it easy is a meaningful part of what Jesus is getting at today. It's ironic because Jesus himself gets pretty worked up in this reading. But I think most of us would get pretty worked up if we were called out, if we were told in public, someone was saying about us in public, you're out of your mind. Jesus was basically being labeled as crazy in public first by the scribes, and then, in effect, his own family does the same thing as they, his mother and siblings, they come to take him home, they rest to restrain him, is what it says. No wonder Jesus gets so worked up in this reading, especially considering the fact that most of what he'd been doing in the early part of his ministry in the Gospel of Mark is healing people healing them physically and healing them emotionally. In this case, ex exercising demons. Including the reading, not just almost right before this one, Jesus had the audacity to heal on the Sabbath and he gets called out by religious leaders who say, you shouldn't be doing that. Um, you're, you're breaking Torah law about what you're allowed to do and not allowed to do on, on, the, on the Sabbath. A misinterpretation and unfair, but that's what was happening. He was healing people. But in our reading today, a group of religious leaders, scribes in this case, 
they take it a step further. They accuse him, they accuse him and in his healings, think about this, in healing people of being driven by the devil. Think about that for a second. This guy is healing people who are desperately in need of, and, and, and need of help and healing. And he's basically being told what you're doing is evil. And then his family seems to certify those accusations by showing up in public to take him home, to restrain him. But you know, come to think of it, what Jesus was doing in many ways, it was pretty out there. Just for starters, in that society, you didn't leave your families, which he did. He had struck out on his own. Family was the source of so many important things. You were the nuclear family and the extended family hung together for economic reasons. They needed to take care of each other, also to pass tradition and culture and religion on. To strike out on his own, to leave his family, it was not the rational thing to do. And furthermore, it wasn't exactly wise to be getting into it with the powers that be, the religious leaders. But still, come on, come on, Mom. Jesus must have been thinking, come on, Mom. You're supporting these religious critics of mine. How about a little support for me? You better believe Jesus was annoyed here. And yet, the way I see this reading, Jesus doesn't just go off like a lot of us would in a family squabble and a squabble with people who are accusing us of, of this stuff. Instead, he uses this as a teachable moment and what's his lesson? I'd argue it's one of the most important lessons that we could ever learn from Jesus, especially considering the times we live in. In a way, Jesus' message is about taking it easy, taking it easy on each other. It's a teachable moment about how we are to live together. And family, as Andrea said, is part of it. So let's pause for a second to clarify what these scribes are doing to him. That really gets under his skin. And the short answer is, they're demonizing him. Literally. They're writing him off. They're assuming nefarious intent in these healings. See, they're assuming the worst about him. They're not even giving him a chance. And so what's Jesus? How does Jesus respond? How does Jesus re come back at them? He basically says, I'm, if I'm so evil, how can I cast out evil? Why would a demon cast out a demon? Furthermore, yeah, there is evil in the world. But I can help you deal with that evil. I am the strong man who can tie up evil. And then Jesus adds something else. He says, don't, he's basically saying, don't demonize me. And it's a little bit confusing. It's a little bit upsetting. He says, don't demonize me. Don't demonize me. Don't assume that God's spirit that is in me and that these healings which are being done with God's power behind me, don't assume that that's evil. God forgives everything, but you know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe not that. And finally, Jesus really comes to his teachable moment. A moment that can sound a little bit upsetting. Because he sounds kind of bitter towards his family when he says, he asks that question, who is my family? I'll tell you who my family is. It's these people following the will of God. Now, off-putting though that may sound, in one moment, Jesus has said something we all need to hear 
And what he's done is he's redefined family. He's expanded our understanding of what it means to be part of a family. Now, Jesus, of course, loved his family, and he was very uplifting of the general notion of family. It's evident in his ministry. Now, he understood how his own ministry caused divisions in families. And it was in those days, especially. But in other ways, so many other ways, it's obvious, even like at the foot of the cross, he's positive about his family. as an example where he connects his own mother as he's about to die with another disciple, creating a new family. And his own brother, James, became one of the most important, one of his most important and loyal followers. But more generally, in his parables, he gives a lot of homey or, or family-like references. And he actually even called God Abba, which isn't easy to translate, but it's a lot like saying Daddy. Of course Jesus sees the importance of family, and of course he loved his own family. And so how beautiful it is that in this teachable moment, he's basically saying, everyone can be in my family. But he's also saying, please, please don't demonize me. And please don't demonize each other. Family members don't do that to each other not in Jesus' kind of family. We all know, we all know that family life is complicated. And we all know that we can get angry in family life. There are no perfect families that I'm aware of. But we also know that families, the hope, and the families often do stay together even when they disagree. That's the hope. And that's the kind of family Christ is seeking here. Not perfect, but one that swims against the tide of culture and stays together even when there are differences. And I guarantee you, there are so many differences in the body of Christ, including this body of Christ, staying together. And of, to add on to this, it's important to see, and it's of vital importance, to see that Jesus takes this even further. Later in his ministry, he takes it even further. He basically doubles down, and he doubles down by saying, truthfully, some of the craziest things anyone has ever said. Crazy by worldly standards. Turn the other cheek. It's not enough to love those who love you. Love even your enemies. Forgive not seven times, but 70 times seven times and many other things, especially in the Sermon on the Mount. And in saying this stuff, Jesus expands not only what family means, he expands what love means. Friends, sometimes love can be expressed as much by what we don't do as what we do. In the simple act of restraint of holding back, of taking it easy on each other, can be a great expression of love. Especially trying not to just sort of fall into the habits and the defaults of assuming the worst about those who we disagree with. Something that is so critical today 
when fueled by online communication, so many of us seem to do this, and it's, it makes it hard to listen to each other, and it enables us to, it enables self, well, it enables us to, 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 to go into our bubbles where, where, where anger can grow. That's very different than being in a family where each person is not in a bubble. You're together. And so Jesus, what he's doing here, he's beginning, he's beginning in the church by defining the church as a place where we need to take it easy on each other and to give breathing room and especially to love, to love, to love even when we disagree. And then, having practiced that in the church, to this, practicing this kind of love, we take that kind of love, we take that attitude, and we seek to share it beyond the church walls in this complicated world. It's not easy, it's not simple, but it's a guidepost for us. In effect, practicing what we preach. And when we boil this all down, what this really is about is what it's always about. It's always about love. Every Sunday. But especially this one is about loving when it's not easy. Jesus really was, he was pretty out there in the things that he said. Because Jesus thinks differently than the rest of the world thinks. The conventional wisdoms of the world are not what Jesus is lifting up. Conventional wisdoms that can be harsh and judgmental and often demonizing. In contrast, Jesus sees things through a different perspective, a perspective he wants us to be able to see through. That's the perspective of the kingdom of God, which is driven by love. And so maybe, maybe what we can say about Jesus is that not as the not as the expression goes, he's not out of his ever love in mind. He's very much in, very much in his ever love in mind. And he wants us to be too. Ever loving. Amen.